When it comes to video game genres, few engross me in the same way that Metroidvania style games do. Guacamelee, Ori in the Blind Forest, even that weird licensed game for the last Mummy film was just fantastic. There's really nothing like dropping into these sprawling mazes and slowly gaining more and more powers so that you can explore even more. So when I heard that the Australian developed Hollow Knight was finally making its way to the Nintendo Switch, I had to finally get into it. So was it worth the wait? Let's find out. Hollow Knight, as I mentioned, is a Metroidvania style game in which you control a nameless insectoid knight as they explore the ancient fallen kingdom of Hollow Nest. As far as the plot goes, that's kind of it. Hollow Knight takes the same subtle approach that games like Dark Souls take, where few things are outright told to you, and instead details are gleamed from environmental elements and character interactions. This not only makes for an intriguing world where players are tasked with filling in the many blanks of the story on their own, it also puts the focus back on the environment, which, in a Metroidvania-style game, is practically like a second main character. You'll be exploring the far reaches of Hollow Nest anyway, so it makes sense that the setting would be treated this way. While I'm on the subject of Hollow Nest, it's kind of crazy how well the setting works within the context of a Metroidvania game. Most maps in these games look like ant colonies anyway, so the fact that you play as and interact with insects in this sprawling world makes a lot of sense. That said, thanks to the game's simple gothic art style, I didn't immediately realize that everything was so insect focused. The visuals make for an interesting take on the concept of anthropomorphic insects and their homes, and there are plenty of adorable, weird, and downright terrifying character designs that you'll see throughout the equally varied areas on offer. While the map itself is huge, it never really gets boring thanks to being split up into these unique themed areas. While things start out pretty simply with rundown architecture and abandoned buildings, later areas will have you exploring lush gardens, crystal-coated caves, and, of course, deep dark pits. And these areas all introduce their own unique mechanics and enemies on top of a refreshing change in color palette. While each of these zones also has their own distinct background theme, the soundtrack as a whole is suitably solemn and gloomy. It fits the dark art style perfectly. But a striking art style and a moody soundtrack do not a good game make. Thankfully, Hollow Knight backs up its style with some of the most responsive action platforming I've gotten my hands on in recent years. Starting with just the basics, you have your melee attacks, your jumps, and your jumping attacks, and even at the very beginning of the game, it feels great. Hitting enemies has a satisfying amount of knockback and hit stun to it, and the base platforming is fast and about as functional as you could ask for. But with any good Metroidvania, the game you're playing at the start is very rarely the same game you're playing at the end, and the same is true of Hollow Knight. This is thanks to the handful of simple yet fun mechanic altering abilities you'll pick up along the way. These range from mobility upgrades such as the Monarch Wings that allow you to double jump, or the Mantis Hook that allows you to wall jump, or combat upgrades that let you wield your signature nail using advanced techniques. These upgrades are often, but not always, associated with unlocking certain areas of the map, and it all feeds back into the satisfying loop of exploring, finding new stuff, then using that stuff to explore further. Now all of that is awesome, but it's Metroidvania Gameplay 101. What makes Hollow Knight unique? Well, Hollow Knight employs a few unique mechanics that add an interesting wrinkle to what would otherwise be an incredibly competent Metroidvania-style game. First up is the magic-like soul resource, which is collected when landing hits on enemies. While you can use this resource for ranged attacks or other map-expanding techniques, its first and foremost use is as a renewable source of HP. Taking a moment to stand still and focus allows you to regenerate health and gives the game a bit of a risk-reward trade-off as you explore. As long as you have enemies to hit, you have a source of soul. As long as you have soul stored, you can regain health. So if you're screens and screens away from your last checkpoint and running low on soul and health, you could easily turn back and play it safe, or you could take a few jabs at an enemy to get that sweet, sweet life juice back. This trade-off is made more compelling by Holy Knight's use of a corpse run mechanic, in which your currency and the ability to hold a full store of soul are dropped when you die. Sure, you could keep going, you can regain your health after all, but if you die, you risk losing all your money. When you do eventually die, you have to kill a fairly easy shade of your former self to regain everything you've lost. But assuming you've learnt from your previous attempts, reclaiming these lost resources is never impossible to do. Even when you die to a boss, more often than not, the death shade has the decency to wait outside the boss door, so you can actually reclaim your money and soul easily enough. Speaking of, these boss fights are fast, frantic, and super difficult. The core gameplay is quite challenging, but it's these boss fights that will put your reflexes and situational awareness to the test. And although some of them can be overwhelming, I'm looking at you, Watcher Knights, they're generally all pretty fair and fun. Difficult, yes, but there aren't many instances where these battles feel cheap. Everyone has a pattern to learn, it's just that these patterns can be super hard to respond to. Thankfully, at the end of the day, overcoming these challenges is really satisfying, and more often than not, rewards you with an actual in-game reward, usually something allowing you to upgrade or customize your character further. 
On that subject, the game does indeed allow you to customize your character with a number of different charms to buff yourself or tweak abilities that you already have. I do like the system where more useful charms take up more charm notches, and it's a neat way around someone just breaking the game by only using the best ones. Not being able to switch these charms at will, instead having to make your changes at a checkpoint somewhere in the world, also means that customizing your knight becomes more meaningful than simply leveling up using more traditional RPG systems. The system isn't perfect though. The idea that you have to purchase upgrade charms in order to be allowed to buy more charm notches is kind of ridiculous. What I mean by this is that you're likely to already have a handful of charms that you'd like to use long before you're eligible for more notches. I found myself dumping money into any and all charms eventually because I simply wanted the ability to have more charms equipped at once, even though I knew I was never going to use these charms that I was buying. My other big gripe concerns the game's map system. Having to find the cartographer in an unmapped area of the world so you can buy what is essentially a blank map for you to fill in as you go feels super backwards to me. I quite like the feeling of getting lost and turned around in this game, so this is not a huge issue for me, but I hate that you're not just paying for a map, you're paying for the ability to make your own map. It doesn't feel worth the in-game cost, especially when it is so easy to lose all your hard-earned cash. Hollow Knight is a damn fine game, but little things like these did get the occasional eye roll out of me since they cropped up so often. With that said, Hollow Knight is excellent. Hollow Knight is a solid metroidvania game with combat and platforming that is simple yet incredibly responsive, and a sprawling world that's brought to life by a distinctive visual style and atmospheric soundtrack. Its unique soul mechanic is an interesting wrinkle to the tried and true formula of the genre, and while I do have some issues with the game's charm system and its in-game maps, these gripes are relatively small in the grand scheme of things. Fans of the genre or anyone looking for a decent challenge or fascinating world to explore could do far worse than Hollow Knight. To make things that much more enticing, the Switch port comes with all of the additional content bundled in with it, so yeah, hard to say no to that.